All right, guys, so picking up with 32. I'm going to distribute my one half to the 36 and the negative 14. Remember, when we have a unit fraction like one half, we can just think half of whatever it is in there. So half of 36x would give me what? 18x. And half of negative 14 would be what? Negative 7. Okay. Do I have to distribute anything to that second parentheses? No, because that's just a positive one. So when I distribute, everything's going to stay the same. So I'm just going to bring down my plus 2x and my minus 9. All right, then I need to combine some like terms, right? So 18x is going to get combined with 2x. And then we need to make sure that we have negative 7 and negative 9 that we're combining. 20x. 20x. Negative 16. Good. Negative 7 with negative 9 would give me negative 16. So 20x minus 16 should have been my final expression for number 32. Alright, and then 33, we're finding the perimeter of the square. So that means we're doing what with all four of those sides? Adding them. But if you're adding the same thing four times, what's a quicker way to write that? If I had 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4, what would be another way to write that? 4 times 4. So same thing here. If I have x plus 1 plus x plus 1 plus x plus 1 plus x plus 1, a quicker way to write that would just be 4 times x plus 1. How can I show that I'm multiplying 4 by that entire expression? Yeah, just put that x plus 1 in parentheses. And then we can use our distributed property to simplify. So 4 times x would give me 4x. Four, 4 times 1 is 4. So 4x four plus 4 should have been our final expression. And you might have done that a different way. You might have just added all your x's together and gotten 4x. And then added all your 1's together and gotten 4. That would work also. Alright, number 34. If we're finding the area of that rectangle, what are we doing with our length and our width? So I'm multiplying 12 times m plus 3. So kind of the same thing. How do I show that I'm multiplying 12, not just by m, not just by 3, but by that whole expression? Yeah, 12 parentheses m plus 3, and then I'm going to distribute to simplify. So 12 times m should give me 12m, and 12 times 3 should give me 36. So the area of that rectangle would be 12m plus 36. All right, we're going to move on to problems 35 through 37. So remember, you can work with your table still. You can still use those whiteboards for scratch paper. I'm going to put three minutes on the timer for these three problems.
All right, so looking at 35. We have Hugo and Maria. They both get $40.50. Hugo's buying a toy tel helicopter for $14.99 and then two albums that cost $10.50 each. Okay, so if we're trying to figure out how much money he has left at the end of the month, um, Caitlin, what would I need to do first? Let me see. Um, you need to. Can I write it down? Please. Yeah. So what I did was I added ten dollars and fifty cents the other twice. Okay. There's two albums. And yeah. I added it to fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents. All right. So when you multiply ten fifty by two and got the cost for the two albums, what did that give you? I got twenty. Mm -hmm. And then you said you added that to the fourteen ninety nine because he's paying for all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so fourteen ninety nine plus twenty one would give us what for how much he's spending? Forty five ninety nine. Okay. And then. I subtracted it from $40.50 and got $15.01. $15.01. All right. Do we agree? Did we get $15.01 also? No. Yes. Okay. So, let's double check. I think. She's good on the $21 for the two albums, and then adding that to the $14.99 for the helicopter. So $35.99 should be the total amount that he's spending. So let's see, if we ended up with something different, what did we do differently? Claire? I got $4.50. Okay, so where did we mess up? Starting out with $40.50. He's buying the helicopter for $14.99, two albums for $10.50. Here's so much space. You said $40.50 minus $35, but you said it equals $15. Okay, so what should it equal instead of $15.01? Three. Yeah, it should just be four, right? So four dollars and one cent. So we did everything right, Caitlin, until the very end. We just subtracted wrong. Four dollars and one cent. What's up, Addison? I got four dollars and fifty-one cents. Mm -hmm. I did. Yeah, it should be fifty-one cents because we've got fifty cents. If we subtract that from ninety-nine, it should give us fifty-one. Okay, so four dollars and fifty-one cents at the end of the month. All right, so then we've got Maria who's spending half of that May amount, so half of that $40.50 on clothes, and then a soda for $1.25. So if we're trying to figure out how much Maria has left at the end of the month, Bethany, what did you do first? Spending half of it first, right? So how do we figure out what half of forty dollars and fifty cents is? Okay, but we don't know what half of it is. So how do we figure out divide by two? Okay, so forty dollars and fifty cents divided by two. We're trying to figure out what's that half that she's already spent. Okay, so what does that give us, Bethany? Okay, twenty dollars and twenty-five cents. So that means she's already spent $20.25, and then she's also going to spend $1.25, right? So that means that we need to subtract, so $40.50 minus that $20.25 that she spent on clothes, and then we're also going to need to subtract that $1.25 that she spent on the soda. All right, so when we subtract those three things, let's see, I think 40, 50 minus 20, 25 should give me 20, 25 again, because we would have the other half. 
And then 20.25 minus $1.25. What would that give us for our final amount, Claire? 19. 19. So she would have $19 left at the end of the month. And 37 guys we haven't really worked problems like this before you might see some on your benchmark so I just wanted to give you an example of some once we talk through them I think you're gonna think they're really easy so that's why I decided to go ahead and put them on the review the way the benchmark works is a company made the test for us and we have to give that test that they made but I get to decide how it's graded so if I see questions that we have not covered in class this semester then those won't be counted against you when I grade them. So that's how it's going to work in the grading process. Um, on 36, we've got a grocery store charging 7.5% 7 sales tax on all the items. So if an item costs D dollars before tax, what expression would show the cost after tax? All right, guys, so we need something that starts out with the original price, D, and then add 7.5% to that. So, which expression do you see that starts out with that original amount? D starts out with the original. And then, this .075, do y'all remember in sixth grade changing a percent to a decimal? Like, if you had 7.5%, you would move the decimal two spots to the left to change it. Does that ring a bell? So that's what they've done there. They've changed that 7.5% into 0 0.075, and then they're multiplying it by the original price. So you're taking the original and then 7.5% of the original that you're adding to it. So D would be our correct expression for that one. All right, 37. A wrestler needs to gain weight to before the next wrestling match. And he weighs P pounds before trying to gain weight and gains 8% more. All right, so we are trying to find his total weight. Now, this time we don't have an expression that shows that addition like we did in 36. But we can write one real quick. So we want to start out with his original weight. What are we using to represent that original weight? P. Okay. And then he's gaining 8% more. So 8% of the original weight. How do I change that 8% to a decimal? Divide by 100. So that's one way. Or I can move that decimal two spots to the left. So what is it going to become when I either divide it by 100 or move the decimal two times? 0 0.08. So we're taking that original weight, P, and then we're adding... 8% of the original. So that word of in math means what? Multiply. Multiply. So I'm multiplying 8% times the original P. So if that's my expression, I just need to figure out which one of these matches up with that. Are these like terms? Yeah, yeah they both have that variable P. What is the understood coefficient for this first P? Mm -hmm. 1. Okay. So 1 P plus 0.08p would give me what? 1.08p. So c would be our expression for this one. So it's okay if you didn't know how to work those at first. I just thought they would they were worth showing you because for some of you that might make sense now that we've gone over them. Don't stress about them though because we didn't learn them this semester so they won't count against you on the benchmark. All right, now we're going to take a couple minutes just to work problem 38. So it has parts A and B, and you've got to kind of figure out some stuff from that table to be able to work it. So I'm actually going to put four minutes on the timer. So that gives you two minutes for each part on this one.
a lot of people still working, so I'm going to give you another couple minutes. Guys, we're going to go ahead and start talking through it. That way, if we got stuck at any point, we can kind of work through that together. So, we're trying first to find the total price of five cases of orange juice, one case of cranberry juice, and three cases of grapefruit juice. In our table, they told us how much four cases of apple juice costs. But if I need to know the total price of five cases of apple juice, what am I going to need to figure out first, Landon? How much each one costs, okay? So if I know that four cases cost $63.60, what can I do to figure out how much each case costs? Uh, divide 63 times 6 by 4. Yeah. So six, I'm going to label this apple juice because we're going to have to do it with multiple juices. So 63.60 divided by 4 should give us how much for each case of apple juice. Claire. $13.90? $15.90, okay. So each case of apple juice costs $15.90. Mm -hmm. Alright, we also need to know the price of one case of cranberry juice. Right now we know the cost of three cases. So once again, what are we going to do to find the cost of just one case? Okay, so I'm going to label this cranberry and then I need to divide $47.85 by 3. So I should get the cranberry juice cost how much for each case? 15. Is it 95 or 99? 95. 95. Okay. So the cranberry juice costs $15.95 per case. Okay. And then I need to know three cases of grapefruit juice. So once again, since my table tells me how much eight cases cost, I'm going to need to figure out how much each case. So I'm going to divide that total price, $95.92, by the eight cases so that I can figure out how much each one costs. All right, so when I divide $95.92 by eight, what does that give me? $11.99. Okay, so the grapefruit costs $11.99 per case. Now I should know enough information to be able to figure out that total price that they wanted us to find. So five cases of apple juice, that means I'm going to take this $15.90 and do what with it? Multiply it by five. So five times $15.90. And then I'm also getting one case of cranberry juice, so I know that's going to be $15.95. And then I'm also getting three cases of grapefruit juice. So I'm going to take this $11.99 and multiply it by three. 
All right, so I'm going to find that total price, but first I probably need to simplify those multiplication problems. So what does 5 times 15.90 give me? Okay, so I have 79.50 plus my 15.95 plus, what does 3 times 11.99 give me? $35.97. And then I'm going to add all of those together. So $79.50 plus $15.95 plus $35.97. Okay. And I'm getting $131.42. Is that what y'all got? So for 38A, we should have $131.42 as our total. Alright, and then B, if the price of two cases of apple juice, four cases of grapefruit juice, and seven cases of orange juice is $168.10, we want to know the price for one case of orange juice. So, right now we have no clue how much the orange juice costs. We don't have a price for it at all. But we do know how much these other juices cost, and we know the total amount. So, what could I probably set up here to be able to answer this question? If I know a total, and I'm trying to figure out an unknown, my name is an equation. we can set up an equation. So I have my total amount, 168.10. Where does that need to go in my equation? At the end. So equals $168.10. And then I'm just going to follow the order of the story for the rest of it. So two cases of apple juice. So that means I'm multiplying 2 by that $15.90, right? Because that's how much each case costs. So $2, I mean 2 times $15.90. And then I'm also getting 4 cases of grape juice. So 4 times $11.99. And 7 cases of orange juice. But do I know how much each case of orange juice is? So how would I represent seven cases of orange juice if I don't know how much they cost? Yeah, just O? Seven O. Or seven X, whatever variable you want to use. I might use an X just so that I don't get confused and think that's a 70. That sounds like something that I would do. Oh my gosh. People. So 7x. Alright, so I'm going to simplify what I can. I'm going to go ahead and multiply 2 times 1590. That gives me 3180. And 4 times 1199 gives me 4796. Plus 7x equals 16810. And then I'm going to combine these like terms because they're both constants. So 3180 plus 4796 gave me 7976 plus 7x equals 16810. So now I finally have a two step equation that we know how to work. Do I need to get rid of my 7976 or my 7 first? Absolutely. So I'm going to subtract that 7976 to get rid of it. Cancel out. Bring down my 7x. And then I'm going to subtract 168.10 minus 79.76. And that's going to give me 88.34. And then what's my last step to get my x by itself? Brooklyn. Divide by 7. Divide by 7. Alright, so when I divide 88.34 by 7, I get $12.62. So that would be how much each case of orange juice costs. Alright, 
right, so lots of steps on those, but pretty much once we knew how to set it up, we know how to do the math from there. So does everyone understand how we got this equation right here? Okay, so if you understand that part, the rest of it is just a matter of doing the math and following the steps. Okay, let's go to that next section, problems 39 through 41. We're going to work those first three equations. So I'm going to do four minutes on the timer again for these three. Remember, you can use your group numbers and you can use your whiteboard. Thirty-nine, Landry. What would my first step be for solving that equation? Um, figure out what r is. Figure out what what r is. Okay, that's the goal. But what's my first step to do that? 
Which number do I need to get rid of first? I worked the problem. I don't know how to do that though. Okay, this is our step that we've been doing since the beginning of October. So, do I get rid of my 10 or my 4? The 4. Yeah, the 4, because that's my constant, the number by itself. Since it's being added, what inverse operation do I need to do? Yeah, subtract 4. So, I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Those would cancel out. I'm going to bring down my R over 10. 5 minus 4 would give me 1. Okay, and then Landry, how do I get rid of that 10 that's in the denominator? Uh, times it by 10. Absolutely. So I'm going to multiply by 10. Those would cancel out. And then R should equal 10. Alright, for 40, Greg, what's my first step on that one? would cancel out. I'm going to bring down my 3p. And then Greg, what does negative 29 plus 2 give me? Perfect. Okay, and then Greg, last step. Uh, okay, so we're dividing by 3. 3 would cancel out. And p should equal what, Greg? Uh, negative 9. Negative 9. All right, and then 41. Landon, what's my first step on this one? Yes. Good. We want to get rid of that 2 that's in our denominator first. Remember, we always want to get rid of the number that's most by itself, so that would be that 2. Since k minus 10 is all being divided by 2, I need to multiply by 2 first. So that's going to get rid of my 2's because they would curl simplify. I'm going to bring down my k minus 10. And then negative 7 times 2 should give me what? Negative 14. All right. And then Landon, what's my last step? Good. All right. So negative 10 and positive 10 cancel. And k should equal negative 4 for that one. Questions on that one? All right, guys, that next group of three, 42 through 44, this one I'm only going to put three minutes because these are just two-step equations on all of them.
I'll say 42. Dee Dee is not here today. Logan, what's my first step on 42? Okay, so I'm going to bring down my 0.4x, and then Logan, what did 5.78 minus 3.9 give me? Yeah. Alright, and then I'm going to divide by 0 0.4. So Logan, what should I get as my final answer? 4.7. Alright, so x should equal 4.7 for number 42. Are we all okay on that one? Anybody have any questions? Anybody think it should be something different? Okay. So 43, negative 12r plus 4 equals 100. Claire, what's my first step on this one? Okay, so subtracting 4. Good, so negative 12r equals 96. And then what's my last step? Dividing um, by negative 12. Okay, so dividing by negative 12 on both sides. So R should equal what? Um, negative 8. Negative 8. Yep, R should be negative 8 for number 43. Remember, we can always go back in and substitute if we wanted to check. Negative 12 times negative 8 would give us positive 96. And then 96 plus 4 would equal 100. So that means we worked it correctly. All right, number 44. Addison, what's my first step on that one? Good. All right, so I know these are going to cancel. I'm going to bring down my negative 5x. And then as in, what should negative 17 minus 13 give me? Negative 3. Mm -hmm. All right, and then my last step to get that x by itself. Divide by negative 5. Good. Alright, Addison, so what do I get when I divide negative 30 by negative 5? Yes, x should equal positive 6. Alright, we okay on those three? Perfect. So now we're moving into our last little section. These three are inequalities. So remember, inequalities work exactly like equations, except... What are the two things that make us have to flip our inequality sign around? Mm -hmm. Yes, whenever we multiply or divide by a negative number on both sides, that's when we have to flip that inequality sign around. Okay, so it does say to solve and graph each of these. So after you solve it, I just need a very basic graph. You just have to show me your number line, show me the number where the circle goes, and then I just need to see your open or closed circle with the arrow points, okay? So very basic. I'm going to do four minutes for these three. We're just working 45 through 47 for right now.
All right, so for 45, first step for solving that inequality, Aubrey would be to do what? Yes, absolutely. You've got to add 110 on both sides. So those would cancel out. I'm going to bring over my 9x less than. Aubrey, what does 475 plus 110 give me? Yeah, so we have 9x is less than 585. And then Aubrey, what's my last step? So since I'm dividing by 9, do I have to flip my sign around? No, because no, we're dividing by a positive number, so x is still going to be less than. And then Aubrey, what did 585 divided by 9 give me? 65. 65. So x is less than 65. So I know I need to show 65 on my number line. Do I need an open or a closed circle? Open. Open, because it's strictly less than. It's not less than or equal to. And then why you're left? All of these numbers would be less than 65. Okay, 46, negative 2r minus 2 is less than or equal to 4. Ashton, what's my first step on this one? Add 2 to both sides. Absolutely. All right, so those are going to cancel out. I'm going to bring over my negative 2r less than or equal to 4 plus 2, which is 6. Ashton, what do I do next? Uh, divide by negative 2 on side. Okay. So when I divide by negative 2, what else is going to happen? Good. So it's going to be r is greater than or equal to. And then what do we get when we divide 6 by negative 2? Okay. So our solution should be r is greater than or equal to negative 3. And then if I have my number line, I know I need to show negative 3 on it. Ashton, does it need to be an open or a closed circle? Closed. Closed. And then which direction? So close circle, shade to the right. And then last one in that section. Brooklyn, what's my first step on number 47? Uh, minus 2. Okay, so I'm going to subtract that 2 on both sides. Those are going to cancel. And I have 8x is less than or equal to 136. And then what's my next step? Okay, so Brooklyn, do I have to flip my sign on this one? What? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so we are dividing, but am I dividing by a negative oh, number? No. no. So we don't have to flip it this time. So x is still going to be less than or equal to, and then what do I get when I divide 136 by 8? 17. 17. So x is less than or equal to 17. So on my number line, I'm going to show that 17. Brooklyn, do I need an open or closed? Close. Closed, and then right or left? Uh, yeah. Yes. Close circle, shade to the left. Alright guys, last problem on our review. For this one, you have to write an inequality that matches the story, solve it, and graph it. Okay? And graph can be super basic, just like the ones we did in that next section. Alright, so I'm going to put three minutes on the timer for this problem. Work with your groups if you need help figuring out what that inequality needs to be. And then we'll talk about it and be done.
All right, guys. So, family of four, they've got to save at least $2,790 to go on vacation. And they have $850 already. They've got five weeks left. They want to save the same amount each week. We're trying to figure out what that amount has to be. All right, so... When we're writing an equation or an inequality, we always look for our final or total amount first. What was our final amount here? 2,790 is our total. And if they need at least that much, what symbol is going to need to go in front of our 2,790? Greater than or equal to. Because if they've got to have at least that much, that means they can have exactly that much or more. If they have anything less, they're not going to be able to go on their vacation. All right, they've already got 850, and then they're going to save the same amount each week for five weeks. How can I show that on the other side of my inequality? Okay, what did they start out with? 850, so let's start there. Okay, and then they've got five weeks left. And they're going to save the same amount for each of those five weeks. How could I show that? Plus 5W. Or whatever variable you wanted to use. Alright, so that's my inequality. They've got their $850. They're going to save for five weeks, same amount each week. And we want all of that to add up to be greater than or equal to $2,790. Alright, so now I just have to solve that inequality. Do I need to get rid of my $850 or my 5 first? $850 positive, so I'm going to subtract it to get rid of it. Cancel out, bring down my 5W. Alright, 2790 minus 850 should give me what? 940. What now? 940. And then guys, what's my last step to get the W by itself? Divide by 5. Alright, so do I need to flip my sign since I divided by 5? No, it's going to stay the same because we divide by a positive number. So it's still going to be greater than or equal to. And then what do I get when I divide 1,940 by 5? 388. So that means they've got to save at least $388 each of those five weeks. So on my number line, I know I've got to show that 388. Does it need to be an open or a closed circle? Closed, because if they save exactly that amount, they're going to have enough to go on their trip. And then what direction would my arrow need to point? To the right. Because if they save more, then that's great. They have more money to buy souvenirs or eat dessert with or whatever they want to do. But they've got to have at least $388. Alright guys, that's the end of our review. You can feel free to look back over that between now and your benchmark to get ready. Make sure that you are here on Wednesday. Tell any of your friends that aren't here today to make sure to be here on Wednesday to take your benchmark. And what needs to be true about your computer on Wednesday? Charged. Fully charged and bring your charger to you. All right, so rest of time, you can do whatever you need to do. We're all going for another class you can. If you need to be reviewing for a test or quiz that you have today, you can. Or you can have all of your free time. Yeah, e-hall pass and you'll need a paper pass too.